President Biden unveiling his administration's plan to combat racial injustice in a speech to mark the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre, a horrific event that left more than 300 people dead. Biden promising to spend billions on racial equity and asking Americans to root out systemic racism. So Dagan will... Millions of white Americans belong to the Klan, and they weren't even embarrassed by it. They were proud of it. And that hate became embedded systematically and systemically in our laws and our culture. We do ourselves no favors by pretending none of this ever happened or it doesn't impact us today because it does still impact us today. To close the race wealth gap, Harold, to you first on this, does spending money, the, the massive amounts of money really that he's talking about here and other places, does that fix the problem? I think it's part of helping to fix the problem. I think sometimes when we talk about racial equity, I think there's a sense that we are saying the country's bad or we're saying that white people are bad or we're degrading people. When you can look at it narrowly that way, but I don't think that's, that's what it's really about. If you look at what happened in Greenwood, that, that, that community was burned down. Greg and I were having an interesting conversation about this before going on. That community was burned down. It was a successful community, black community economically. So taking efforts and targeting the money and saying, look, we as America, there's no other country in the face of the earth that can go through this and recover and, and thrive the way we, we are and have the kind of conversations that we have. So if it makes us a little unsettled, a little uncomfortable having a conversation, so be it. As long as it doesn't come from a place of malice, as long as it comes from a place of trying to make things better. And I, I give him the benefit of the doubt, the president, and his efforts to try to do that. If the money turns out to be a waste and they need to shift it, reorganize and redo it, but in, 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 at the start, I think you give him the benefit of the doubt and you try to do it. Greg, to that interesting conversation you had with Harold from what we just heard from President Biden. I'm the first president in 100 years, he said, to acknowledge the truth of what took place there in Tulsa. Well, I, was, I had no idea that, I mean, this was not taught to me in, in high school or college. And I, I was thinking, is it because I'm on the West Coast? Is that why? But it's, you know, it's a horrible story. I think it's important to talk about it. But that's a separate issue then from this idea of equity. I'm, a, I'm an apostle, apostle of Thomas Sowell. So it's like, I, the, when they shifted from equality to equity, mm. it becomes a different <coughs> story. It's not, it, everybody wants equality, equality of opportunity. But we understand that the equality of outcome is impossible. And it's harmful. There are certain places where I will, ne uh, the percentage of five foot five white guys with, with an Ashkenazi background will not be in the NBA. There's maybe, it'll be less than 0.00%. So we have, to, we, have to, we have to ask ourselves, why are we shifting from equality to equity? And it's because we realize that discrimination, de deliberate discrimination is illegal. And we know that it's not happening. Everybody in corporations wants to hire minorities. Colleges want minorities. So then where is the discrimination? It's before that. It has to be before that because we are seeing problems on the street. We are seeing uh, lots of issues. So it happens. We are meeting this problem too late. Mm -hmm. And that's where I go back to Thomas Sowell. So he'll bring up three areas. What are the three areas that have neg negatively impacted black lives? He'll say the welfare system destroyed the family. He'll say teachers' unions um, killed competition, school choice, that kills education. The third thing now would be the de-escalation or the defunding of police, which now makes communities where minorities live unsafe. So g government bureaucracy by liberals has, has, gone after, has hurt families, schools, and communities. That's what makes everybody suspicious. Like, what can they do that can make it worse? And that's what you have to worry about, I guess. If I were a black American, and Who says I you're not? see, <laughs> well, you know I have my DNA test. I know. Point one percent. And if I see another white liberal like Joe Biden coming around and saying how they're going to help me, yeah. I would shake my head. I mean, ha for how many years has have white liberals said they're going to help black America? And you still have the black poverty rate twice that what white poverty rate is, black unemployment rate twice what white unemployment rate is. You have the black education gap. It's gotten bigger. You've had now less black families intact. Is any of that working, what we're doing? I'm actually thinking now when the government says they want to help blacks, they're actually hurting blacks. Because where are the trillions we already spent go, Joe? Where did they go? Did they go to just the race hustlers that run the federal programs that don't work? 
because they didn't go to the people that needed the help. So if someone was saying, I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you, you know, I'd say, you know what, I'm going to help myself. I'm going to operate my schools, my businesses, my families. I'm going to keep more of my money. And I bet black Americans would thrive if white liberals stopped trying to help them. I think if the teachers' unions sure. let the education flourish, exactly. that would be a big start. And the Democrat Party is behind it all because they want to call black Americans victims. When black Americans are labeled victims, that means they need help from white liberals. And help means votes. You get votes in exchange for help. Once they're not victims anymore, they don't need help, and then they don't get the votes. So you're going to see the Democratic Party, and I know you agree, because you're shaking your head yes. <laughs> they keep playing the race card, because that keeps victimizing black America, and that keeps the Democrats in power. And that's never going to change. That's never going to change. So what if I told you, what if I told you from 1920 to 1980, um, 99% of all loans for homes, residential mortgages in the country, were only provided to white Americans, and at 99.5% of those providing that were the government. Mm. And it was an intentional effort on their part. And what if I told you the number one creator of wealth in any family, regardless of what you look like in the country, is in your home? Now, if you deny, the numbers are what they are. And I think there was an intentional effort. I think part of what he's trying to do, and I don't dispute a lot of the things you say about, I mean, I, I, when I hear liberals saying they want to solve every problem, I get concerned. In fact, when I hear any Anyone saying they want to solve every problem, I get a little concerned, but particularly in this space. I think finance, economics, we've got to find ways to tell these stories to remind people what happened. And two, the things you mentioned, or those three things that Mr. Sal mentioned, there were challenges before. We were trying to address right. them, and the answers weren't sufficient. That doesn't mean we, we, we stopped trying. I think we have to continue to offer idea after idea, whether it's conservative or liberal, to try to solve this. I believe from 1920 to 1980, if just 5% of that money had gone to black homeowners, Think about how many more black businesses, how many more black homeowners, how many, because remember, the number one determinant for how well you do in school, in this country, public school, is the zip code you come from, regardless. So if you had more money in local communities, more money would go towards schools. We're not going to solve it all here in a minute and a half, but I think there's a lot, there's a lot more to it than what we, what we discussed. And, and that does speak to one of the words that you will hear from uh, black Americans who are upset about, the in, about inequality is ownership. And it goes back to the Tulsa massacre. It goes back to home ownership. That's, that's something that, that's a word that you will hear and a message that you will hear often. But in terms of liberals, look no further than the liberal bastion of Silicon Valley. I talk about this over and over again. If you look at the percentage uh, of their workforce that is represented by black Americans, <coughs> it is dismal. It is appalling. In technical jobs, Facebook has less than 2% of people in technical jobs who are black. You mean to tell me over the last 20 years or so, or since these companies were founded, they couldn't have done something about that? Actually going into high schools and pulling people and educating them themselves, they're starting to do that, but it's a little too late. And in terms of what Joe Biden wants to do, it might be unconstitutional. Last week, there were two courts that blocked Joe Biden's Small Business Administration from handing out benefits based on race. It's $29 billion restaurant relief fund. So you know who gets to the front of the line? It is minorities and women. At the back of the line, it was everybody else. And if it run out, if these, that program runs out of money before it gets to someone who is a white man, then you're out of luck. And those, those two, pro, two judges, two courts have blocked that program so far because you know what? Bias and discrimination is wrong and unconstitutional regardless of the group. And if you haven't seen the budget proposal because it came out Friday, <laughs> Friday late in the day before Memorial Day, you saw that it was in it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.